Game finishes 1-1 there. Mm. Replacement refs and all. Herc, many out there, including our producer Beto, are saying this was Inter-Miami's worst performance of the Lionel Messi era. Do you agree? That's a good shout. I I'm trying to think, because listen, uh, the Leo Messi era doesn't just mean when Messi plays, but I can't even think of a game where they mm. played without Messi, where they played this bad. And you know what the worst part about it was? It was sad. It was like watching your heroes get old in front of you, like before mm. your very eyes. Luis Suarez couldn't move. Jordi Alba was, was a cone at times. Messi was nowhere to be involved, even though he tried. The Sergio Busquets, like... It's been a while since I've seen Sergio Busquets be one-way traffic like that. This was something else for Tata Martino's team. It was one of the worst performances I have seen of Messi and his team in any jersey. Forget Inter-Miami, any jersey. And we've seen some performances where Barcelona has come out of the losing end by six, seven goals to a Bayern Munich. This is one of those moments where if the game at halftime is four, zero, Galaxy, you don't think twice about it. It was that bad. And I repeat it's the fact that you have this collection of superstars who look not just human but brittle and right mm. before your eyes yeah i kept thinking the thing that was going to let this team down herc was going to be its defense but even with messi alba busquets and now luis suarez up there they're just not that dangerous i mean in the first half to your point the la galaxy totally played them off the pitch inter miami had 60 percent possession in the first half and for all that, they had one shot on goal, and it was that deflected shot that Messi had that was lucky that it even happened. It came off a, a kind of total blooper mistake at the back for the LA Galaxy. I don't know how, Herc, with this type of attacking talent, you can be so toothless uh, as Inter Miami was last night. It was their worst performance of the Messi area of the Messi era. I think it was also his worst performance. He was frustrated. You could see him yelling at his teammates, yelling at the Galaxy guys yelling at the replacement refs, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. And I got to think some of that is fatigue. You know, it's, it's a cross-country flight, two games in four days. It's the worldwide travel that we've seen throughout the preseason. It's starting to wear on these guys. The question, though, is, Herc, is, is everybody else or anybody else in this league good enough to take advantage? Because Inter-Miami, with Lionel Messi playing for 90 minutes, they're worth at least a goal, if not two. And RSL couldn't take advantage of the many opportunities they had. And the LA Galaxy here, man, as well as they played, and I think, you know, we'll get to them in just a minute. There's a lot of reasons for optimism if you're a Galaxy fan. They couldn't take advantage of the opportunities they had. Is the rest of MLS good enough to push this inner Miami? Because this inner Miami is not perfect, but they're, they're escaping so far through two games. Yeah, it smells very much like last season. Um, think about it. How many games do they have where they should have gotten three, four goals against them until something happens, a moment of brilliance? And by my calculations, that's like the fifth time Messi saved them over the 80th minute where he comes to the rescue, whether it's a game winner or it's a game-tying goal or he does something mm. to give his team points. That's going to run out like it did last season. Listen, uh, Cruz Azul thoroughly played, uh, you know, outplayed last year in League's Cup. We can go to the Open Cup game versus Cincinnati. We can go to long stretches of the game versus Nashville. We can go to long stretches of the game versus LAFC here in Los Angeles last year when Inter-Miami should have been down 4-0, mm -hmm. where Denny Buwanga had probably three or four himself. Teams are leaving Inter-Miami and the best player of all time, Messi, on the hook. And if you leave a team like that with so much individual talent, on the hook, still breathing, they're going to make you pay. And that happened to the Galaxy. Now, how it happened to the Galaxy, we'll get into in a second. But the second half performance shouldn't be why the Galaxy lost this. It's their first half performance, their mm. inability to put them away. Uh, have we seen the blueprint now? I mean, if we saw RSL, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I know it's, it's two different games, right? It's RSL going away, so they're going to have a different approach on the road than maybe they would at home. Uh, and it's LA Galaxy at home, so they're going to probably have a more aggressive approach at home than they would on the road. But we've seen the two different approaches you can take to inner Miami. The one against that RSL used, I don't think worked quite as well as what the LA Galaxy were able to do, especially in that first half, Her They made inner Miami and some of these great players, especially Busquets, look almost pedestrian under that pressure. I, I mean, I, I think you see where the glaring weaknesses are or, or what, what hurts inner Miami the most. Mm. And it's if you're dynamic, if you're fast, if you're physical, because some of their players, and I repeat, 11 versus 11, I don't care who you think you have on your team, regardless if it's the best player to ever <laughs> play the game, 
if you have a weak link or multiple weak links, especially physically, they're going to hurt you. And that was the case. Joseph Paintstill, excuse me, had a field day in the first half. I think Diego Fagundes cutting in and allowing, you know, some of that play to come in centrally to Rookie Push uh, was very good in that first half. Uh, Jovlich was quiet, but they had chances. So, mm -hmm. you know, regardless of, of what the Galaxy or teams have not done in the past, I think the blueprint is there. You let Inter Miami have the ball. You let them, you got to rope-a-dope them, have mm -hmm. them come to you so that space is there for you to exploit after, and you can counter them at will. It, it, it's, it's that easy against Inter. Now, you've got to take advantage of it because if not, Messi's going to do what Messi continues mm -hmm. to do in this league and will continue to do if you give him space. Uh, Herc, since you mentioned Luis Suarez, let's go there next. That's now two games in MLS without a goal, and he's looking, you know, every single one of those 37 years. I think that's safe to say as we take a look at the uh, Luis Suarez heat map here. How long do you think Inter Miami can rely on this guy based on what we've seen so far? It doesn't look too different than what we saw with Joseph Martinez last year, if I'm being honest. And, and given Luis Suarez's track record, uh, I'm willing to give him some time. Now, now a, a good mm. buddy on social, you know, the tactical manager, Felipe Silva, he actually put up uh, Suarez's stats in Brazil. The first 15 matches, four goals, four assists. The next 18, 13 goals, seven assists. So what I'm trying to tell you is you got to have faith in the man. You, he's a goal scorer. Let him score some goals. Mm. He's going to start feeling it, and it'll start happening. You've made an investment here, and, and, and not just on, Leo, uh, sorry, on Luis Suarez, but Leo Messi. And that means keeping Messi happy. And Messi and friends is part of that equation. Tata Martino's not going to rock the boat. He's mm. not going to start moving Luis Suarez around. He's not going to start moving Sergio Busquets. He, he's going to look for solutions to patch the team up and hopefully get these guys going. Because I think it's safe to say we all agree, if this team can get going with the amount of individual talent they have and collectively how they know how to play together, they could be a very, very scary team. Mm. But as I see it right now, Unless this team drastically changes in the transfer market come summertime, it's not going to be an easy road for Messi. Uh, so you mentioned something earlier that, that piqued my interest when you talked about watching your heroes age, right? Yeah. Um, as we're watching Luis Suarez, for those that didn't watch this game, there's kind of two ways that players, I think, can age. You can see a guy and you can say, all right, he doesn't have what he used to have, but he's still useful, right? He can still do a job on a day. He may not be what he was five, ten years ago. And then there's the other evaluation, which is this guy has hit the wall. Between those two, Herc, I know it's only two games, but this to me looks more like a guy who has hit the wall. Like physically, he just doesn't look right. And, and beyond not being able to move and kind of get to the spots, uh, especially in this game, his touch was off. Like even what I would assume is kind of basic hold-up play for a forward he was struggling to do. And I know Messi's his boy, but Messi wants to win as well. Um, I don't know what the other options are. you got Campana on the roster. You know, he's a little bit more mobile, but he certainly doesn't have Luis Suarez finishing. I don't know if you saw the news. I don't know if you saw the news the other day. Kun Agüero, medically cleared. Wait, I mean... Wait a second. You, 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 mean, you want to go from one Messi and friend to another as a solution? I mean, if he's got a better knee than Luis Suarez, yes. I don't, even, I, I don't even know if it's the knee. I, I think it's something else. Yeah. During, during the Salt Lake game, he came up limp, and you can visibly see him kind of suffering to run. I think he's nursing something right now. Listen, I think the knee was an excuse to get himself out mm. of Brazil, to find himself in Major League Soccer, and here he is. Now it's just about getting healthy, scoring goals, and I, I think we could both agree that if he's healthy, he will score goals. But it's honestly, it's very difficult to play from behind, and I think – Inter Miami might be playing mm. from behind quite a bit this season if they don't figure out the transfer moves in the summer to get this team to be dynamic, get some legs underneath them. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, the thing that nobody at Major League Soccer, Herc, wants you to talk about, the replacement refs. Now, you weren't here on Wednesday, but Casey was very kind to the replacement refs oh, on Wednesday. So you hardly noticed, hardly noticed the difference. Right. Uh, I think we noticed it in this game, yeah? It was terrible. Um, call a spade a spade. Uh, it's not their fault that they're not capacitated to be at this level. But well, it is their, it is their fault. They, they, they took the assignment. There's a no. lot of refs out there no. that stuck by the, the, the union here. That's there fair. are a lot fair. of, there are, yeah. Fair. So they wanted the spotlight. They wanted, as Don Garber would tell you, this wonderful opportunity to check out the, the depth of the referee talent pool. Very fair. I will concede there. This can never be a foul let alone a yellow card for Mark Delgado. Mm. It can be a yellow card for simulation. 
uh, <laughs> from Sergio Busquets. And, and I, I will actually ask Major League Soccer to look into retroactively, one, uh, withdrawing, rescinding a yellow card or the red card from Mark Delgado, and two, adding a third yellow card because Sergio Busquets got three yellow cards or should have gotten three yellow cards on the night. He should have had three yellow cards. The first one for pulling paint still down, that's a yellow. The second one, which he earned, and this one for simulation. This should be a suspension. The eyes of the world are on this game. All these social media accounts are going viral for what you did not call. They think MLS is a joke because of the refereeing. They think this is a Mickey Mouse League because of what you just showed them right there. So you have to take power back into your own hands. You can't review a yellow card. I understand why VAR didn't go there, okay? It's a red card off a yellow card. You can't review that, I understand. But you can go back and make it right, make amends. This is a situation right now, Major League Soccer, Don Garber, the powers that be, have the power to make it right. The world is watching, so we wanna see. Yeah, I don't know if you saw the reporting from our good friend over at the Philadelphia Inquirer, Jonathan Tannenwald. It says uh, MLS is apparently threatening big fines against players or coaches who complain or talk about this lockout with the referees. And I'm sure there's some guys, whether on social media or on the game after, after the game last night, that wanted to have a word here uh, about what's going on. It's an embarrassment for the league. And really, Herc, you got to ask, like, what's the point here? When is MLS going to grow up? You know, we hear about these valuations. Our teams are worth $700 million, $800 million, $900 million. We, we got a TV deal worth $2.5 billion. And, and we're worried about paying the referees. I mean, the ARs, you know, they're worth in $35,000 a year, reportedly, for like 30 games. And, and MLS wants to be this major league, and we're fighting about money. You went out and got messy. You did the damn thing, and you got, you got scab refs, replacement refs. The guy looked like a... A substitute teacher in high school. I mean, it really is a bad look for the league. And on top of all the other stuff, Open Cup, um, they just can't seem to get out of their way right now at yeah. a time when MLS, Herc, I think should be popping. It should be popping off. This should be the best moment in league history. And Don Garber wants us to talk about other things other than Lionel Messi. Well, guess what? The other things are refs and the Open Cup. That, that's the other things to talk about around this league. It's sad because I've been in Los Angeles playing in that stadium. Dignity Hill Sports Park, calling games in that stadium, or watching games as a fan for the better part of over two decades. And it's been a while since I've seen or felt the stadium with that type of atmosphere, that type of electricity. 2005, when I was part of the Galaxy and we played against Real Madrid, was the last time I felt that stadium like that. And it's ruined by the image that you're given because you're nickel and diming what should be somebody you should reward uh, in this case. So I, I, I agree with you. It, it's sad. It, it's it's clownish um, that you would try to find and censor your own people. Mm. Can't censor me. That's why their <laughs> players quote tweet what I say. You can't censor me. That's a reality. You talked about the flamethrower we have. Here it is. Yep. All right. So enter Miami and LA Galaxy then finish in a 1-1 draw.